All right, students, we're going to learn about the molecules of life. These are the four molecules we need to grow and survive and to reproduce. They're very important. we got to take them every day. Um, they're called macromolecules. Macro means big, real large molecules. And we're going to talk about these. These are carbohydrates. These are proteins, nucleic acids, and lipids. Here are the main points. Uh, there are four mo macromolecules that are organic compounds. And what does that mean? Organic means that they contain carbon and are naturally found and produced in living things. The four macromolecules are polymers built from single monomers, uh, single uh, building blocks. The monomers of proteins are the amino acids. The monomers of lipids are fatty acids and glycerol. Monomers of carbohydrates are monosaccharides. The monomers of nucleic acids are nucleotides. Remember those. They're always on test questions. Proteins are needed to build the body and to reveal every trait. Carbohydrates provide support and immediate energy. Lipids provide long-term energy. They build hormones and build cell membranes. Nucleic acids like DNA and RNA contain our genetic information for building proteins that build our body and make our traits. So this is the image you want to draw in your packet. So you want to pause it and draw it in there. Continuing on, again, these are proteins. Again, every protein is... Um, these are polymers built from monomers. Again, monomers are the building blocks. And here's a monomer. It's called the amino acid. Um, and here you have that form. Is a, that's the chemical um, symbol for it. So that's more the molecular formula of what it looks like. So let's just go ahead and, and go through each of these. We got our proteins right here. Remember what they look like. We got our carbohydrates, the lipids, and the nucleic acids. And again, the monomers of proteins are amino acids, so we either see them like a sphere or in this chemical formula um, where it has an amine group, amino group, and a carboxyl group, an R group, and a an, uh, hydrogen. And this R group is the one that's different. All these are constant, uh, but this is the one that's different, and that's there's 20 different um, forms of that R. So there's 20 different amino acids. And again, here we have the carbohydrates. These are polymers, or polysaccharides here. They have more than three uh, sugars connected. But remember, one carbohydrate, or one building block, is called a monosaccharide. So these are monosaccharides. This is more the chemical formula. Going to lipids, um, this is a phospholipid bilayer. Again, it's a polymer. It's made up of uh, many, many many uh, building blocks and the building blocks are called fatty acids and glycerol so here are the chains of fatty acids and here's the glycerol piece this part loves water this part hates water so that's one thing about lipids is they don't mix well, very well with water and then finally we have the nucleic acids um, like DNA and RNA and the building blocks are nucleotides so that's a nucleotide this is more of the chemical symbol of a nucleotide so those are the building blocks Organic compounds, again, they're molecules containing carbon that are naturally found in living things. Uh, carbon um, is a very, very important element. Um, it's, in our, it's in our bodies, and it's in all the four molecules of life. And again, remember we talked about the carbon cycle, that carbon has to be cycling all around through nature, through the living and non-living things, so that organisms can get their carbon to build these structures. But what makes carbon so special is it's really cool. It's able to, uh, to bond with um, four other atoms because of its um, electrical nature, which you'll learn about later on in chemistry. But it's able to form all these amazing structures, so this is what carbon can form. It can form all these chains. It can form sheets, layers. It can form like soccer ball structures, and it can form a lot of other things with many different properties. So carbon is a really cool element so that we can build many kinds of structures. So check for understanding. Again, just pause the video and look over these questions and see if you can answer them. Okay, moving on. The functions of proteins, again, here are proteins. This is a protein, again, made up of many amino acids. Uh, proteins are found in our skin. Um, they keep our skin strong and, and healthy. They're found all over the place, and not just skin, but these are a few examples. They're found in our muscle to make the... Um, protein filaments that allow our muscles to contract and to expand and causing us to move. Um, proteins are found in our eye to give us our eye color. So proteins are very important, not just to build our body and build our structures, 
but to give us all those traits we always talk about, like eye color and hair type and height and those things. Uh, here's an enzyme. Remember, an enzyme is a protein. Um, so you'll find some proteins that are antibodies, and here they are binding to some antigen or to some pathogen, some bad thing that shouldn't be in our body. So there's a lot of types of proteins, thousands of different types of proteins. Again, remember, proteins build our body and they give us our traits. Going to lipids now. Um, lipids um, have many functions. Um, there's some lipids that are part of the of the cell membrane. We call them phospholipids. And again, they form the phospholipid bilayer. So that type of lipid makes the cell membranes and keeps them together with the cell membrane, uh, which controls what goes in and out. Um, some lipids are known as fats, also called triglycerides. So that's a picture of uh, someone with a lot of triglycerides. Um, this is a picture showing hormones. So some, uh, some lipids can form hormones or steroids, and so they allow for the cells to signal to each other. Some lipids are also known as, as waxes, which keep things um, waterproof just like our earwax so that water goes in and it can just slide back out, protect our ear, or protecting, that's the waxy coating of a leaf, so that when it rains, the water just slides right off without damaging the, the leaf. Then we got carbohydrates. Carbohydrates, um, carbohydrates are very important because they provide immediate energy. And so like a runner is going to load up on a lot of carbohydrates before a big run because they give them power. They give them that quick, quick energy that you can use to run and to do all those things or weightlift even. Um, carbohydrates are also um, structural support. So in a cell wall, you have uh, the carbohydrate called cellulose, which allows a cell wall to be powerful and strong. So that's what's in the cell wall right there. And... Going back up here, and I forgot one thing about lipids, uh, going back to the triglycerides, again, it's a form of, of energy storage. So lipids actually store two times more energy than all these other molecules of life. That doesn't mean go ahead and start eating a bunch of lipids. The problem is it's that it's long-term energy storage, so they take a longer time to burn um, because they're meant in t to be used in times of fasting or where there's not enough, enough food around. So we burn it slowly to keep ourselves alive. So again, long-term energy storage, triglycerides. Uh, going back to nucleic acids, again, these are the molecules that store genetic information like DNA and RNA. And inside, there's a code, and the code is to build uh, proteins. Um, these sections of DNA are called genes, and they, they're there to build proteins, different kinds of proteins to reveal our traits, um, our metabolic traits in terms of how fast we use energy and to control our growth and development. So there's all sorts of proteins. Again, that's from the nucleic acids, the molecules that contain our genetic information. Carbohydrates, a couple more things. Again, carbohydrates are also known as sugars. Um, there are three monosaccharides. Again, this, these monosaccharides are the building blocks. Don't forget that. So one is fructose, which is found in fruits. It's a very sweet uh, type of sugar. Um, that's why putting um, bananas and strawberries in your milk uh, when you're eating cornflakes or whatever, Cheerios, it sweetens it up very nicely. So that's, again, fructose, a very sweet and healthy sugar, naturally. Um, and then there's glucose, which is probably the most important sugar of all because that's what the cells love. The cells of most living things on this planet love glucose. Your brain loves glucose. Your muscles love glucose. It's a very important energy source. And then galactose, which is found in milk. And then there's something called disaccharides. It's whenever you get two monosaccharides and connect them, like you have sucrose right here. And that's also known as table sugar, which is really glucose and a fructose connected. And here are three important polysaccharides. You have starch, which is the energy storage form of sugar in plants. And then you have glycogen, which is the energy storage form in uh, humans and animals. And whenever you need them uh, to be used in the body, uh, they're actually stored after you eat. And they're stored in your muscles and in your liver especially. But when you need them at night or let's say you're asleep or you need it because you're doing some kind of activity, um, what they start doing is they start separating actually. And 
your cells kind of break them down with certain enzymes. And so these little monosaccharides, one at a time, start popping out into the blood and start feeding your brain and your muscles. So this is the energy storage form, but to use them, they have to be in monosaccharide pieces. So that's how we get them in the blood and to your brain and muscle. Um, and then again, this one is the form of uh, cellulose, which is in our cell walls. And to that's to provide uh, structural support, keep those plants strong and to withstand the effects of gravity. So again, checks for understanding, and let's see how we did.